There's a cold wind blowing, said the mastermind. Five times over, deaf, dumb, and blind. It's a better way of living, a way to move around. On a bus wide open, just to do sound. What's up guys? In this video, we're gonna be taking a little bit of a closer look at the hardwood hand reel that I created. And along the way, I'll kind of give you a little bit of a backstory of why I actually created it in the first place. Also, if you're one of the people who signed up for one of these, <clears throat> it's gonna be a good idea for us to break it down, get familiar with the parts, learn how to cast it, learn how to reel it, um, learn how to set the drag. Yes, there is drag on it. Left-handed, right-handed, and the strap adjustment where it's a little more comfortable in your hand. So let's do it. Okay, as I'm breaking this hand reel down, I'll kind of tell you how this idea was born. Um, anytime I'm out tracking or hiking or going to be out for an overnight or especially an extended stay, and I come across a little stream or a pond or a small lake or something like that, um, you know, it'd be nice to just be able to, to fish it and toss a line in. You know, see if anything was biting. If you, if you do catch a fish or it seems like a decent place to fish, you know, then, then you've kind of can supplement what supply of rations that you brought with you and make it last a little bit longer for something unexpected. Or if you, you know, maybe you come across somebody on the trail that's, you know, share some snacks, whatever. <clears throat> but anyway, the solution seemed pretty simple. Just take a rod and reel, right? <clears throat> well, I've discovered that that's not as practical as it sounds because any going under any trees or through crevices or caves or anything is not real practical with the full length rod. So I've even tried it with the shorter rod. And still, same thing, you know, it just wasn't short enough. I even bought one of the most flexible, toughest rods on the market and bent it over, arched it around my pack. Um, you know, in order just to keep it out of the way. And it ultimately is like a loaded conibear, you know, you don't want that to whip somebody in the face. So, I thought maybe just taking a reel is the answer. And then, you know, put some zip ties on it and fashion it to a piece of cane or something really straight when you're out there. That's kind of an okay idea. You know, other than once you use those zip ties, they're kind of they're kind of used and you either have to carry a bunch. And there's not always something straight out there. So um, I wanted something that was basically just a reel. And I know the, the hobo hand line type of thing is out there. And that really seemed like the best option until I used it. And then, you know, some other experiences and even Arctic experience kind of thought, you know, that kind of let me in on the idea that, hey, you know, this is really not the best way. Um, in the Arctic, the problem with hand lining was... All right, we didn't have we didn't have barbs on our hooks um, for starters. That was kind of a problem. Um, but hand lining is hand over hand action. But there's a second in between each grab of dead space. And if you let slack off that line, especially with barbed hooks, those fish are getting off of there. Um, I think Kai commented the other day just on you know how handy it would have been. And so a lot of the a lot of the idea for it was was drawn from that situation. And also, you know, super cold, hand lining, a decent sized fish, and, and the fish in the Arctic were pretty big. You don't want that line cutting into your hands when it's really cold out. Um, and as far as the, the hobo hand line, you know, it, it didn't offer either one of those options. It didn't offer the ability to be able to reel and keep the tension 
on the line and it didn't offer, you know, the ability to be able to reel. So you didn't have to actually grab the line with your hands. <clears throat> what I do like about the hobo hand line type of setup is there's something, something pretty nostalgic and majestic about spinning that line and throwing it out there, you know. Um, it, you feel a little more in contact with nature and I, and I like that. So I didn't really want to lose that aspect of it. Um, plus, if you've ever seen anybody do it, it's pretty sexy. All right, so all those ideas combined is what brought this thing to fruition. All right, so we got it all broke apart here. And first we're gonna take this back plate that's how we get started. Notice it's got a bunch of holes in it. That's for adjustments. So you can flip it over left-handed, right-handed, whatever, wear it how, whichever angle that it's comfortable on your hand. I like it perfectly in line with my middle fingers. And I like the strap to come across behind, behind my knuckles. Not over my knuckles, not in front of my knuckles, but behind my knuckles. That's the most comfortable spot for me and that's also something that felt really natural first thing you're going to do is put this carriage bolt in the back of here um, and the hole is shaped square just like the carriage bolt so that's going to lock that into place and when it comes time to put your nut on that's going to be able to let you put this on and, and crank it down to whatever kind of tension that you want on it ultimately it's a drag um, without spinning this inside shaft, otherwise you'd never get it tight. They would both just keep turning. All right, so once you got that on, next you're gonna go with the strap. I like my buckle towards the bottom and I like it slightly tilted. And these Chicago screws are what's gonna hold that, hold that strap on and in doing so, in putting that strap on, you're going to also be able to hold that carriage bolt in place because the strap covers it up. And then there's no chance of losing that in the field or high grass or dropping in the water or whatever. So I tried to really think about every aspect of it. You know, not everybody's gonna wanna wear it the same way. So I wanted the adjustments. And I didn't know it was gonna be comfortable either. I was just kinda winging it, you know, by the seat of my pants. Tighten that down. Kinda bites into the leather on the back. If you ever mess with Chicago screws before, that's kinda how they work. <clears throat> and even having that strap over the carriage bolt in the back creates this little bulge and that's actually really comfortable in your hand. Um, I like the buckle towards the bottom where I can just flip it up and run this through and then you can just kind of pull it tight. And I like it, I like it pretty snug. All right, get that back up over my knuckles and that's kinda, that kinda lands it in the perfect, perfect place I wanna put. Next, we're gonna go on with this washer. That's gonna create a little bit of separation, just enough in there where the reel doesn't drag on the back and create a lot of friction and make it hard to turn. Um, Next, we put this copper tube in there. It's gonna work like a spacer, and that's gonna kinda of keep from wearing the inside of the reel out. And you know, it makes it spin good and smooth. I don't really know if that spacer is necessary or not, but since it is, for now, we're gonna put it on there. And it also, where I cut it, kinda of flared the ends of the copper tube in just a little bit and that allows you to kind of thread that on there so you're not losing any of that in the water as long as you don't take it apart it's not going to fall in there 
Um, next, obviously, is the is the reel, and then the face plate with the handle on it. Now this nut is sticking out of the back of here just enough to catch in this notch. And the reason for that is if it didn't catch in the notch, you'd just be spinning, spinning, spinning that face plate. It wouldn't, nothing would be happening. So when you set it all the way down and it catches in there, now you've locked it in and you could really reel on that. Next, we're gonna put a, another washer create that separation again so you don't want it rubbing on the nut directly. This has a lock nut on the inside. Um, it's called a stop nut actually, which is gonna make it stay where you put it. And as you tighten this up, you know, it's pretty loose. Um, wherever, you know, whatever's comfortable to you. But ultimately, this copper tube in here sticks just about flush with the front of this handpiece, and that's going to stop you from cranking it down so much that it won't move. Um, but it will. I mean, you can make it. You can make it tighter to a degree. You know, that's pretty. That's pretty tight right there. But I like to back it off. Since it's got that stop nut, it's not going to. It's not going to fall off, and that makes it smooth really well. Now let's pull this back off, and I'll show you another piece. Um, on the top of this reel, right here, there's two little holes in there. And I've created those holes in there. It's just something real simple. You can feed your line in, pull it on the inside, pull it back up, tie it, whatever. Tie it on the inside, doesn't matter. It's just an easier way to get, get your line started than trying to tie a slip knot on the outside when your hands are cold. And then obviously you can put, you know, whatever you want in here. Um, you put something that you find in there, a piece of little piece of bone that you've made into a lure, or um, you know, I think in mine there's a little piece of feather, a few hooks, um, some sinkers, because that's actually pretty important. <clears throat> Again, in the in the Arctic, the shore was so shallow out to the deep water that we had hooks, you know, and you could fashion your own lure, but weight was a big issue, keeping enough weight on there where you could throw it out far enough. To where the fish were, um, so you know, put some put some little sinkers in there because they're not easy to come by when you're out in the woods. Now, to give you an idea of how you cast this thing, we'll grab this other one here since it already has line on it. This is actually one that I've been field testing and using of my own, and it works really good. All right, so I actually cast this. What you're going to want to do is unhook it from this eye and then that's when you're going to spin it. You, you want to hold this reel kind of facing forward where to let it reel off. Like if you hold it sideways, it's not going to come off. If you've ever thrown like a hobo line, it's kind of the same thing. Um, yeah, so you're going to face that out front to where you're throwing and you're going to spin this and then it'll just, it'll just spool off of there. And when you get ready to reel, you can just grab it one time and pop it right back in there. And then now, you know, you could reel it. You can reel it like you need to. But pretty simple, but it's efficient, you know? And this one, this one's kind of been through the ringer a little bit. It's the one I carry with me and I've definitely been putting it to the test. It is slightly different. Of course, it's kind of the prototype model, but you can kind of see what I got in there. I mean, there's a little piece of turkey feather that I made like a little rooster tail with, and I had a little piece of bone that I'd carved into a lure, but I lost it in a tree. That's going to happen. You know, I got a few sinkers in there, a swivel, um, some small hooks. Again, you know, it's not, it's not something you're going to want to go try to land a dozen marlin on or anything like that but um, for like brook trout and, and streams stuff like that it's going to be great and it's going to be compact and I actually wanted it designed to where it would be strong enough to pull some of these big Tennessee catfish you know 
and some of them get pretty big and it's they're just dead weight and so i feel really comfortable that it do that i haven't caught one on it yet but i feel comfortable it has enough cranking power to be able to reel that fish in okay so that's kind of a little inside look of the madness that's in my mind um thank you guys for watching i really appreciate you guys being accepting of my ideas and, and sharing my ideas the way you do um but that's all for today i'll see you guys next time